This is the Tesla's holiday update 2020.48.26. Not 25. I don't know why it says 25 here, but 26. So this is the Tesla's holiday update that everybody has been super excited about. Unfortunately, this is not V11 that we thought it was going to be, but it has some pretty cool features such as this. Today, I'm going to go over each of these features and I'm going to do a demo of what changed from the previous versions and what cool things that this software has. If you're new here, my name is Shiva Sabkoda. I make Tesla videos covering a wide range of Tesla topics, all software updates, autopilot, tips and tricks, and many more. If you like what you see today, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for your time. Welcome back and let's get started. First in our release notes are the release notes improvement. Now you can see them here. Um, you have to go to the software tab, but what I like here is you can see what the previous release note had, right? So right here it says the previous one was 2020.48, 2020.44. So as you can see, uh, it, it keeps track of the previous release note. So now you know what changed from the last release note. So that's really good. They also added a couple of games and we'll show you that in the game section. Uh, but basically they added three games here. There is some driver driving visualization improvement. I think this is the biggest improvement in uh, for this update this is the biggest update uh, in terms of driving visualization improvement because as you can see here this ui changed this is a brand new ui it looks beautiful uh you you can see a lot in this ui and we're gonna go drive uh to see what changed while we're driving but for now i'm gonna go over what changed in the driving visualization as you can see here there is also the scheduled departure. Now you can stop, start and st uh, stop charging based on your peak rates. And you can also now schedule charging, schedule departure where it will precondition your battery in your cabin and you don't have to be plugged in. Previously, you had to be plugged in for that. They also made some changes to the supercharger display improvement and we'll, we'll show you here just in a second. But basically, it shows you in this big letter how many superchargers are available versus the previous where there was these three bars or however many chargers were available. It was showing a bar and a bunch of other stuff. Now it is easier for you to know, okay, there are five superchargers. In this case, five superchargers available. There is also the vehicle information. Uh, instead of having that big T logo up here on top, now you're going to have to go to the software section of this uh, tab where uh, it even shows right here the T logo is no longer available. Uh, everything is the same, but now you just have to go to the software section. The T logo is not here. If you see the UI, I mean, this is so big, like this expanded and this is in preparation for the full self-driving update where you are going to want to see more closely what is happening in the road. So they widen, Tesla widened this UI. I really like it. I know that the maps are going to be a little bit smaller now, but this is really neat. Um, and there is a lot of detail. So why don't we just go get it started? I mean, we already covered the release notes improvement. As you can see, there's not much. It's just now you can see previous release notes. Why don't we see the driving visualization? Uh, now, this one is pretty cool. You know, it the UI went from totally different to this, as I said earlier. Now you can see a big car right here, beautiful model, three red on my case. So here, this is the, the big UI over here. So if I open the door, as you can see, the, the door opens. This was also previously available. The, the car would just be uh, straight up here where you can see the door open and close. Now, if I close the door, what's what happens to the windows? So watch closely what happened to the window. As I roll down the window, you can see the visualization of window being rolled down. And you can do the same thing with the rear window. As you saw, the windows rolling up and down. You can also do that with the charge port. So if I press on here, you saw the charge port going up. And if I close the charge port, the charge port closed and you can see that in the UI now. Um, you can unlock and lock the car from right here, which is super easy. And then trunk and trunk, when you open it, you see the UI right over here. And it's a big, beautiful, I really like it. I'm so excited about this. Um, another big change on the UI is right here. The You know, there is used to be the backup camera and the trips uh, right over here. And then there was your, when you move, when you slide, there was your windshield wipers. I used to see the, the tire pressure. Right now I'm not driving, so the tire pressure is not showing over here. 
Uh, you can see the odometer here and then the average watt per hour. That is still there if you do it. But your wipers have gone down right here in the bottom. And then your backup camera now is right here. So those are the main changes to the UI. And this also looks kind of a white background. It looks slightly different than how it used to look before. Another big thing that changed is if I put this into the, like all of your alerts are here now on the left hand side instead of in your top where you used to get your alerts and then your drive reverse neutral your your driving commands are right over here. So instead of having it right here it moved and now they are in the left hand corner and if I put into drive you see the big uh, drive sign here and it shows how many miles per hour right here. And then when we go on driving, we'll show you where the autopilot speed sets uh, and everything is in this UI, but it, it changed. Now the car is bigger, there's more space and you can see where the car is gonna turn a little bit bigger. And then the battery has moved over here. You can still tap on the battery to see all of this. I can see the steering wheel <laughs> as it tilts. It's pretty apparent that it's tilting right over here. It's pretty cool. Your speed limit is, as I said, is over here. Um, not too much of a UI difference other than how big this space is here. Your speed, current speed, your autopilot speed, and your speed limit is here. And let's make a lane change. Whoa. The car is coming too fast. Made a lane change. Nothing changed other than it's so big. Let's go back to this lane. Yeah, again, it didn't change anything other than it's so big. I think the more driving visualizers are gonna come with the full self driving update, which I'm gonna be making a video on. So stay tuned for that video. Again, it's, it's big, you can see the, you can see here, right here, the blinker uh, in the UI. The car is really big. You can even see the front, front screen, the center screen right here. Um, the rear brakes, you can see everything a little big. I think this is gonna be super helpful with the full self-driving update because, you know, as I'm turning here, I want to be able to see clear lane marking. Right now it doesn't show anything, but I want to be able to see where it is It is making the lane change to, where it is going. So this is super good. It's really big and I really like it. So let's now look into the scheduled departure improvement. So if you press on the battery icon here, you see the scheduled charge start. That hasn't changed. You can schedule charging at whatever you want. But right here in a little letters, it says switch to schedule departure. And if you press here and press schedule, now your car will be preconditioned by this time. So you can put, you know, 7 a.m. is your, uh, your schedule departure. You leave for work and you want your car to be preconditioned by that. Now this does not take into consideration when your off peak hours end. So let's say your off peak hours end at five in the morning, but then you don't leave until seven in the morning. Now Tesla allows you to fine tune that setting. So if I go to setting here, it says preconditioning, you know, all week, only in the weekdays. Now right here, it says turn off scheduled charging to use off peak charging. Now where you can click here and if you do off peak charging, you can do either weekdays or all week. And then now you can change your off peak hours. So here is where you can set, okay, so my off peak hours are gonna be just 5 a.m. So my my rates go up at 5 a.m. I want to charge at a different rate. And if you need more information on what off-peak hours are, what demand charges are, I have a video that I'm going to link below where I cover all of that in great detail. And if you press on the information here, it just says set cabin 
and preheat battery by scheduled departure time if the battery is above 20%. So your battery has to be above 20%. And now it also works whether your battery is plugged in or not. It, it works all the time. That's why it has to be more than 20% battery level for you to use the, the preconditioning feature. And right here it says off-peak charging, schedule charging to comp complete during your off-peak hours to reduce energy costs. So it will turn off charging, but it will still precondition your car by your schedule departure. That is what I'm getting out of this uh, release notes at least. Now let's look at the supercharger display improvements. If I go to all the superchargers, now if you see right here, it tells me how many supercharger are available so right now in uh, this is Lone Tree in Park Meadows there's only two superchargers available but here in Centennial I have nine superchargers available and then three so it shows you how many superchargers are available a little bit of better of UI here so if I click on any of this it shows you know airport way this is where you can use your amenities um, um, and you can you can navigate to that location but right here it says four stalls available and um, I clicked on that. So it says four stalls available. And right here in big, you can see there is four stalls available. So a little bit of an easier, a better UI in this sense. Here is the vehicle information. Um, th that was the improvement. As I said, there is no T logo here. To pull that up, you would have to go here and then press on software. And this is where you see your vehicle's information and owner's manual here. So nothing changed other than the T logo has been replaced now. So if we go to entertainment, here is your three new games. The Battle of Polytopia, Solitaire, and Car Quest. So those are those are the new games after, you know, there's your Beach Buggy. Everything else stayed the same. They just added three new games here. And then theater is still the same. If you have seen any other videos on this particular software update, you might have noticed that their release notes are a lot longer than mine. I only have these three games, the driving visualization, schedule departure, supercharger display, and vehicle information. I don't have that whole boombox feature that was added as a part of this update. And unfortunately, the reason I don't have that is my car is a 2018 build and they started adding that external speaker in 2019, September of 2019. So unfortunately, my car doesn't have that external speaker, so they didn't even release that. I would have actually liked to play with that interface, uh, even though, yes, I can't use the external speaker, but it would have been nice if they at least included that in my car. But now, if I go to my uh, toy box, here there is that emissions but there is nothing. There is no boombox. There is no, you know, change my car's horn to a goat. Um, I don't see any of that. Uh, I was super excited. I mean, those are some silly things, but I was super excited to get those. And I'm kind of disappointed that Tesla did not include with my car. And pretty sure there's a lot of people on the same boat receiving this update where they don't get those. Um, I know that we don't have external speakers and I hope Tesla retrofits that somehow. But even though without that, we would have liked to play with the interface. So Tesla, if you're listening, I want my full update. Well, that ends today's video. As I said, I'm a little disappointed in Tesla for not putting the boom box or that you know, emission test thingy. Uh, I, would have, I would have liked to play with the UI, but eh, it is what it is. Uh, I also received this update late. Uh, I normally am one of the first ones to receive update. That's why I have been bringing a lot of new videos to you as soon as there is a software update. But I literally just got the update and I wanted to make a video to show you what the cars without external speakers are getting. And the reason I got the update late is because they pushed this update first to folks who have that external speakers. Um, and don't quote me on this, but I think the, the speaker started coming along in September of 2019. So if your build is prior to September 2019, you probably are getting the same update as I'm getting where there's no boom box or some of those exciting features. But regardless, this update is exciting. I like the UI, I like the supercharging, the, the schedule departure update, the car information. I like all of that. I like seeing the previous release notes. So, you know, I'm very appreciative that Tesla actually sends this update for free. You know, that is, that is amazing what, you know, the car totally changes and becomes a new car. So I'm very, very thankful for that and I am glad that 
um, I have a Tesla. Let me know what you think about this update and your thoughts on whether or not Tesla should retrofit that external speaker. If you want that external speaker, I'm pretty sure Tesla will have to figure something out. But, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of unfortunate at this point. We don't have that. If you enjoyed today's video and if you found this video to be helpful, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like this video, turn on the notification so you don't miss any of my future videos. I have a lot more Tesla videos on the way. I will be doing a two-year review of my Model 3. Uh, it has been two years since I purchased my Model 3 and I want to share my experience of how that went. Those two years passed by pretty quickly. My maintenance cost, my charging cost, what I had to replace and what I think about the car in general. So that video is on the way. So stay tuned for that video. I thank you for your time. I really appreciate your time and support to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Namaste.